There are 11 reasons I'm including here that you are not losing weight with exercise during menopause. And of course, you're trying. So this is for all of you that feel like, ha, there's a little bit more cushion in the couch than I'd like. And what I'm doing is not helping. This is for you. It's not, unfortunately, for you who are more slight in frame, who are trying to actually build muscle, but have really no weight to lose. But it might also appeal to you. So don't go away too far anyway yet for a moment. If you're struggling with energy and sleep and you can't figure out why that might be eluding you, you might want to stick around because some of these things, though they are very tied to not losing weight or your success rate losing weight, they also will be related to fatigue and a lack of energy, not really having the all six cylinder firing feeling that you've got your focus, your concentration. So there you have it. Now, you know, take me on a walk. This will, by the way, be a long one. I'll give you a few breaks along the way. What are the reasons you're not losing weight with exercise, even when you're trying? Well, it varies from woman to woman, but there are common denominators for midlife women. Explore these if you can't get that needle to move. And I'll share another podcast that you might love too about exercise mistakes specifically that you might be making. So really today, I will hint at some of those, but I'm really talking about what's going on under the hood that's getting in your way. By the way, this episode is brought to you by the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. If you love training, coaching, and working with women in midlife, especially if you are one, then this is your stop. There are two levels of the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. There's a do-it-yourself course, and there's one that gives you the do-it-yourself course plus the business in a box complete with a license to customize the worksheets that I use with clients. You have access to those for two years and you get support working on cases or your own hormone balance, whether that's understanding your symptoms so you can modify an exercise plan and lifestyle choices or which labs you might want to consider if you want to take that next step and how to understand what those lab results mean and what's the difference between some labs and other labs. So if your clients or you are getting back your labs and it says, quote unquote, you're in the normal range, nothing is wrong, but still you don't feel good. There's a whole lot more to it. And I can help you understand either what to do for yourself or what to do and suggest your clients do playing the role of health coaching, not playing a doctor, not on TV or anywhere else. (laughs) For those of you who want to accelerate your branding and your business, there's also a mastermind where you can regularly get the steps to build or rebuild your brand in 2021. And you get hot seats where you actually literally get coaching from me on your next step. If you have trouble charging what you're worth, pricing, positioning, putting packages together or getting traction with your website traffic from social media marketing, the mastermind is definitely for you. We're enrolling a small cohort during May and giving extra bonuses for getting started and getting your business bigger or launched in 2021. I'll include all of that in the show notes. The links will be there for you. So let's go here. Number one out of 11. So buckle your seatbelts, lace your shoes, head out the door. Let's start. Hidden food sensitivities. So a food allergy is obvious. A food intolerance is mysterious. 
It's the result of inability to digest or absorb a food completely and or certain foods that you've eaten have caused that problem for you. So you're not getting all the goodness that you might be eating when you say, I'm eating healthy. I don't understand why I feel this way or can't lose weight. It happens to most of us later in life, and it can happen when hormone changes occur that also affect the gut. They are like best friends or not. And that is once perimenopause begins, it's a perfect storm for changing the way your body reacts to certain foods, certain things you may have eaten really very regularly, no problem. And even things that fly under the radar and you think, well, I don't have a problem with that. You actually might, your body may be sensitive to it. And here's the kicker. Those healthy foods that you may be having every day, if you're having spinach every day, if you're putting strawberries in your smoothie every day, those foods may actually be food sensitivities. So it's a great argument for including diversity in everything you're doing. We talk a lot about that inside the Flipping 50 Fitness Membership, rotating what you're doing with meals, with smoothies, the ingredients that go into them is really important. Even for those of us who feel like I could eat the same thing every day, but you shouldn't. All right. So if you've tried core work and cardio and strength training, and you still can't get rid of the pregnant belly, you may need to redefine quote unquote, healthy food for you. Gas and bloating, diarrhea, fatigue, constipation, inability to lose weight, they're all just clues. They're data telling you that even though you think you're doing the right things, you may not be. And we've got to take a closer and a different look. They can be related to reduced production of enzymes that are needed to break down food that occurs with age and a reduced amount of stomach acid. So eating yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese, you may be lactose deficient or lactase deficient and unable to break down lactose and eating lots of beans, bran, fruit, sugar, alcohols, like erythritol, for instance, in your foods as sweetener. You may lack the enzymes to break down the volume of carbohydrates. Vegetarians or vegans are most susceptible. So this is where being a very healthy vegetarian or vegan can really backfire. You're eating more and more of those foods to get the amount of protein you need, but it's actually causing you more and more issues. And you've got to take a good look at the enzymes and stomach acid, potentially that may be helpful to you. Histamines in foods, healthy foods that you may be eating on purpose could actually be causing you the problem. Spinach, tomatoes, fermented foods contain foods that break down into histamines. And, you know, when pollen's in the air and you have watery eyes and you sneeze, that's an obvious sign. But this, much less so. Gluten sensitivity. A lot of women who never test positive for celiac disease, which is the true allergy, experience fewer gut issues and fatigue when they remove gluten or significantly reduce it after a period of elimination. And the same goes for wheat. They are, wheat is gluten. However, there are many more foods and things that are containing gluten than just wheat alone. Reduce your exposure to trigger foods. That's the answer. Support your system with enzymes. Foods you eat every day are the ones you're most likely to become sensitive to, and specific foods are greater triggers than others. A simple food flip, and that's what it's called in our world, can help reduce the stress on not just your gut, but your liver and support a metabolism boost as well, while it reduces your exposure to unknown sources of inflammation. Look, you're not putting them in your body on purpose, right? I offer a food flip a few times a year, and the link will be in the show notes to learn more. As I'm doing this live, we launch in May. So if you're coming on board, you got to get there quick. All right. The number two reason 
nutrient deficiency. You know, it's been said many times, the U.S. is the most overfed, undernourished country in the world. If you're a woman used to cutting back and eating iceberg lettuce or even spinach for that matter, or kale, far too often in order to diet, cut back calories, you may be missing micronutrients that you need. It's nearly impossible to eat a balanced diet that contains even the RDAs, which doctors, RDs alike, protein experts now recognize as too low for anyone to thrive in 2021. Take it, take a good look at your diet first and the diversity of the foods that you eat. I mean, really, so if you have a smoothie every day, are you putting spinach in it every day? You shouldn't. You should put maybe spinach in it, maybe romaine in it, maybe kale in it. You know, and if you're choosing, well, mixed greens, I'm doing the superfood greens every day because that's got three different ones, but you're still eating the same ones every day. See it? So rotating your greens makes far more sense. And I hear you girls who are like living alone or nobody else in your house does it. You'd be throwing a lot of those away. Throw them in the freezer. You can put frozen ones. Your body won't know. It goes in the blender anyway. Okay. So because we know it's nearly impossible to eat healthy and eat all of the RDAs, which we know is actually too low for anybody to thrive on, you have to take a good look at your diet and diversity and consider supplementing with an intelligent, high quality multivitamin. You know, a one a day vitamin is probably not your best choice in 2021. Even before you take it, the vitamins and minerals inside that pill are competing with each other. When it gets into your system, it's like musical chairs. You only have so many chairs or receptor sites, and some of those minerals have to go for the same one. So somebody gets bumped out of the game. The best way to know what your body needs is a micronutrient test, and then you're not blindly supplementing, and you'll be more compliant. I find that's true for me. So today, you can use your insurance through your doctor, or you can order your own direct lab. So I will do this frequently if I'm not working with a doctor at the moment, but regularly I want to test what's my omega-3 to omega-6 level, what's my magnesium level, what's my vitamin D, and what's my iron level, B12 levels, because many of those are tied to energy and or fatigue. They're also tied, vitamin D, to metabolism and your ability to develop muscle, specifically fast twitch muscle. And I'll put a link below where you can actually test with your own self-directed lab. But if you have great insurance and you have a doctor who's willing to listen to you and say, look, I know these are the number one biggest deficiencies and I'd like to know where I am, ask for help. Do know that how your physician interprets those labs, though, if you come back in all norms, often again, that's like the RDA. Norms are inclusive of a whole lot of people and the average of where they are. That means you too may not feel good like a lot of people do. Optimal levels are often different than norms, not for every micronutrient, but for several key ones. The third reason you might not be losing weight and trying from your exercise is a lack of sleep. Hormones are directly related to your ability to store or burn fat and to counter that with gaining or at the least maintaining lean muscle mass. You nurture those specific hormones that nurture, nurture lean muscle when you sleep. Of all the reasons you're not losing weight, sleep is probably the most passive to fix. The number one thing you can do to improve your weight loss results without changing anything is get the right quality and quantity sleep for you. So instead of choosing an arbitrary quota of sleep, test your own sleep needs. Go to bed when you're tired. Keep the bedroom cool, dark, quiet. I use an eye mask and if I need to when I'm traveling, I will use earplugs 
especially if I'm sleeping next to somebody who's snoring, conduct that experiment. Allow yourself to wake up naturally. So you may need to be on vacation. You may need to do this over a weekend several times and get three to five nights and then five is better. So you compare what's my average when I really let myself go to sleep when I'm tired, when I wake up naturally, how many hours of sleep do I need? And compare that to what you're usually getting and close the gap. Now, listen, I know some of you are thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. What would happen to me is I'd wake up. I might get to sleep, but I'd wake up during the night and not get back to sleep. There are almost two dozen things that you could be doing to support yourself. I'll put a link in the show notes. There are going to be a lot of links in the show notes. Don't go making yourself crazy by clicking on all of the links. Go just to the one that you need the most support in and start with that. There is always what I call one domino. There's one big domino that if you focused on that, made all of your decisions about that, in this case, sleep, you exercise in the way that supports getting more sleep. You eat in a way that supports getting more sleep. And if you don't know what that is, definitely you need that Sleep Yourself Skinny book mentioned on the show. All right. Now let's go on. And these next two, I want you to pay attention to because they are specific to exercise. One is, this is number four, by the way, exercise of the wrong type or at the wrong time. Even the right exercise at the wrong time is going to backfire on you. Strength training should be your highest priority after 40. The younger a woman gets comfortable weight training, the less likely she'll associate menopause with weight gain. And by the way, a study published by ACOG, that's the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, that is the writes the Bible about hormones for women in midlife and at every age, published in 2019 a study of 1 million women and showed, proved that there really is no, zero, nada, association with menopause and weight gain or fat gain. So I know you're saying, but we do. (laughs) Yes, we do. But lifestyle habits really pop up here as we've got to examine, first of all, what's your mental expectation of menopause? What are you doing? Are you really as active as you were 10 years ago? Are you drinking more wine? Are you eating more socially than you were? Are you maybe locked up for 14 months during a pandemic with your hands in the pantry when typically that's not really working? Are you under more stress than you've ever been before? Are you sleeping less than you ever were before? And any of those can contribute. So listen to this. Muscle is the organ of longevity and it's paramount to your metabolism. Cardiovascular exercise and mobility activities simply don't have the same effect on your body's ability to expend energy. I'm not saying they're not important. And often some of that mobility may be important in order to get you into alignment to be able to do more safely for longer in your life, those strength training exercise. Aging naturally results in a loss of muscle if you're not doing resistance training to stop it. I want you to hear that because this plays back into that study from ACOG, right? That there is no correlation between weight gain and menopause. Now, we know that in the United States, and this is worldwide, in the United States, it happens. However, it has a whole lot more to do with your lifestyle habits, what you're doing and not doing than anything else. And aging is the same way. In the past, it's what we've seen. You age, you lose your muscle, you get weaker. Now, will that happen to you? Yes, if you're not doing anything about it. Pick up some weights, baby. Long-term changes in body composition occur thanks to strength training exercise for major muscles just twice a week, and twice a week is good, best, ideal in studies comparing once, twice, and three times a week in postmenopausal women. This is true. But the exercise 
has to be of adequate stimulus. Here's the habit of women who come in early to the Flipping 50 community. They're like, is twice a week enough? And it's like, are you doing it hard enough when you're doing it? That's my question back. Most women are used to half, I'm sorry, half assing it. They're picking up weights. They're putting them down at the end of the set, moving on to the next exercise, but they never reached muscular fatigue. You will not change your body, your body composition by doing that. And if you got away with it when you were 20 and you were 30, you will no longer get away with it. At some point in your 40s, that will change. When you're 60 and you're 70, it's more important. You're working harder, not slacking off. You don't need chair aerobics. You don't need chair yoga. You don't need the pool and going soft and gentle unless you've thrown yourself under the bus and we need a reset. You are strong. We create human life. Are you kidding me? So you've got to repeat. You're not broken. You may need a reset, but the reason to do that reset is so that you can get your big girl skirt pulled up and start lifting weights and getting breathless. Long-term changes in body composition occur thanks to strength training exercise. Remember that heavy weight training shows the greatest success in supporting weight loss, specifically fat loss. Yes, you heard me. No, you don't need more cardio to burn more calories. You will burn more calories, specifically more fat, post strength training, if it's of adequate intensity, than you will during cardiovascular work. If you can't tolerate heavy weights or certain joints can't, or you're just starting out, even lighter weight training should take you to muscular fatigue to optimally change the muscle. That will mean more repetitions and that's okay up to a certain point. I would never take anyone beyond 25 to 28 repetitions or we're wearing your joints out for other purposes by other means in and not heavy. So of course you do need a little cardiovascular exercise. You just need less of it than you've been led to believe. And temporarily you may need even to ditch it completely to heal your cortisol levels. Perform high intensity exercise, whether that's interval training or it's weight training early in the day when possible and low intensity exercise late in the day to work with your hormones. There's something I call the flipping 50 tenants. There are 10 of them. And the very first one is restore before more, but the next one is intense early and light late. And if you want to shoot for hormone balance and you just want, give me the basics and I'll do this, do those two things. If you're exhausted, stop trying to exercise more to lose weight because it absolutely won't work. If you've restored, you're rested, you've got energy, then start changing the time and the type of exercise you do. Now, number five is tied right to that. Number five is lack of rest and recovery. Most women erroneously exercise more and eat less to lose weight because it's what you've been told. That's like one foot on the accelerator, one foot on the brake, and your body does no better than a car would in that situation. The biggest problem with increasing exercise is that you fail to increase the amount of rest between your sessions. So after 40, the need to recover increases in both men and women. Your capacity to exercise at high intensity doesn't change. You can and should be doing that. It's required for optimal hormone balancing exercise, but without adequate recovery between those high quality intense sessions, you're breaking your muscle down twice as fast as you're repairing it. That's kind of a given with age, unless you do a change in your exercise. So all exercise is a catabolic experience. What does that mean? That means breakdown. There's a micro damage that happens to muscle while you're exercising. If repair isn't allowed at the cellular level in those muscles between your sessions, your metabolism cannot, will not, benefit from the exercise. 
you're just breaking it down and you're actually risking becoming more frail, losing that lean muscle mass, getting more tired, and therefore increasing your body fat. Exercise creates the opportunity for fitness. Rest and recovery, that includes light movement, sleep, adequate calories, and adequate protein. That's what creates fitness. Increase your fitness and you'll increase your metabolism. For one of my 67-year-old clients, Jennifer, I've shared her story. Increasing her rest and recovery significantly resulted in a weight loss of 100 pounds after many years of a weight loss plateau. She couldn't lose because she was exercising every day for hours and throwing herself under the bus. She was often injured. She was, you know, catching colds regularly, you know, and I think over the last couple of years, I can't think of a time she's been sick and or injured, maybe a fluke pull here and there, but nothing that slowed her down. During the pandemic, it was that she crossed the threshold of losing 100 pounds. That was approximately seven months into pandemic. So if you are wondering, can I do this exercising at home? She did. She's 67. I think so. Sound like possible reasons you're not losing weight? So too much exercise, wrong kind at the wrong time, or lack of recovery. Someone told you you should lift weights every day because that's how you increase your lean muscle mass. It's absolutely the wrong thing to do. If either exercise the wrong way or lack of rest and recovery, sounds like that could be you. The answer is not to try keeping your exercise programs that weren't made for you. The answer is a reset. If you're not exercising right, you're doing too much resulting in constant exhaustion or frequent injuries, or you're just doing something like lifting four times a week, allowing complete lack of recovery or evidence that what you're doing is clearly not helping your metabolism at all. Because if it was adequate intense, adequate intensity was present, you would not want to lift four times a week. You need a five-day short reset, and I've got just the thing. I call it the five-day flip, and listen, try it for five days, just a reset. You'll be shocked, and you'll think, this cannot possibly work. I get it, but you may need a reset so you can still do something, but give yourself a little bit of vacation, and listen, you can always go back, if it doesn't work, to what's not working for you now. Are we good? (laughs) All right. The next five are all about hormone effects. Each of the aforementioned reasons that you're not losing weight contributes to one or more of the following underlying hormonal reasons that you are not losing weight. Number six is an estrogen decline. Estrogen decline is a natural part of aging, definitely of menopause for women. And it provides a stimulus. Estrogen provides a stimulus for lean muscle when it's present at adequate levels. We rarely hear about that role estrogen plays. When that stimulus is removed because estrogen is declined or gone after menopause, you have to get it from somewhere else. So somewhere in your 40s, your exercise probably stops working as well as it did, partially because of decline of estrogen. Your exercise has to change when your hormones do. If you still want results, the same exercise will not get you the results it did when you were 30 or 40. For some women, this means backing off, getting the rest mentioned earlier. For others, it means shifting from cardio to a strength training emphasis. And still others, the majority of women need to find an intensity that they've never had with exercise. Now more than ever, you need adequate intensity if you're in midlife or beyond, and that is reaching muscular fatigue, not general exhaustion at the end of a strength training session. You may have to first dig yourself out of a hole that you're in before you add intensity. I'll include my TEDx talk here to demonstrate how this worked, not only for myself, but as well for two clients. Number seven, the reason you're not losing weight, even though you're exercising in menopause, is cortisol imbalance. 
if cortisol is too high, when it should be low or low, when it should be high, you're probably storing belly fat like a squirrel in the fall. Adequate sleep is your first line of defense. But if your body is stressed, it will hold on to every calorie for that rainy day effect, right? So you've got to think about what's going on for you right now. And you and I are used to just suck it up, buttercup. We can get through, people can count on us and we will deliver. You may not be feeling the effects of too much cortisol. You're just seeing it. You've got a symptom. And that may be weight loss resistance for you. It may be inability to sleep. It may be that you kind of have a short fuse. Right? And, and any of those are possible. If you have cravings, potentially that's tied to cortisol as well. But those signs and symptoms may be there, even if you think, well, I don't feel stressed. You know, but if someone else would look into your life and say, you've been dealing with this and this and this for a long time, and now we're in a pandemic, and what did that do to your cortisol levels? And you've got to really take a look at it or maybe let someone else peek in with you, someone you trust. Number eight, the eighth reason you're not losing weight would be potentially low DHEA levels. DHEA is a hormone and production levels, again, decline with age. And that's a problem because DHEA is a precursor to your sex hormones and paramount in the balance of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. You don't hear much about DHEA, partially because those sex hormones are stealing the show, but low levels of it can be confused with cortisol imbalance as well. Like your immune system, not as strong, you get sick more often when you're exposed to a cold or someone who's got one, you'll get it. And by the way, that should not be true. If you have a strong immune system, being exposed to somebody with a cold does not mean you should get the cold. So it means you are depleted when you are exposed. You might be unable to sleep or feel tired much of the time. And again, those sound a lot like cortisol, but those could be signs of DHEA. Estrogen dominance is another one. This is number nine. So I just said low estrogen levels, but... Now I'm saying estrogen dominance. You may think for a moment I'm crazy, but hold on with me. Your body may in fact be producing too much estrogen, or if you're doing hormone replacement therapy, the level of your estrogen may just not be regulated quite right for you yet, but there's more. Even when estrogen is low, it can be high. Estrogen levels do, of course, drop as you enter perimenopause. But if you're under a great deal of stress or self-imposing it with loads of exercise and dieting, cortisol is probably blocking progesterone. That's what it will do. So if you've got, you're creating cortisol or it's there for other reasons, it may block progesterone and progesterone and estrogen should be basically on a teeter-totter with each side similar in balance. So that's a problem. If you want to feel calm and relaxed, we need to get that lifted. Progesterone and estrogen should be in balance. So if progesterone is blocked by cortisol, your estrogen is high relative to it. And belly fat is usually the result. Low testosterone levels. Testosterone is your alpha girl hormone, by the way, from boardroom to bedroom, it gives you confidence. It also supports lean muscle and makes those workouts you're doing more beneficial. But coming from the reverse, without testosterone, you lack muscle tone, energy, and libido. You can inspire a better shot of testosterone by changing the way you're exercising. 80% of women in menopause report low libido, often tied to testosterone. And it doesn't have to be that way for you just because it's quote unquote normal. And all of these hormones play somewhat of a part, modify your exercise and your partners can improve your libido. Therefore, your testosterone is improved by focusing on your strength training, focusing on short, high intensity interval training and restore before more in general. But 
the last thing to remember. So you cardio queens, if you're doing a lot of cardio, just getting on and going and over and over, you're doing, you know, going for 45 minutes or an hour, or you're trying to go longer because you're thinking that'll burn calories. You're burning yourself out of your bedroom, really. So you've got to ditch your endurance exercise if you want to see some improvement there. 11 is decreasing growth hormone and stick with me because I'm going to give you a bonus at the end. All right. You have declining growth hormone with age and it is so important for your lean muscle maintenance, but growth hormone production can be optimized at least to some extent by strength training, but you've got to be getting your sleep. So if you're on a win bet campaign for, for your muscle, you want to boost growth hormone naturally by doing, say, 10-minute interval training sessions and sandwich with a warm-up and cool-down, of course, or one or two times a week um, you're doing that, plus you're lifting heavy weights when you're strength training. And again, you keep it short. It's not about doing an hour-long workout or 45-minute workout. You can do a 10 or 20-minute workout for strength training, reach muscular fatigue, and do yourself much more good with growth hormone and testosterone. And then you recover by spending plenty of time in deep sleep where growth hormone and testosterone are both created. Okay. Now, the one hormone that I did not mention is actually insulin, and it can be very tied to cortisol. Insulin supports stabilizing your blood sugar levels, but women in menopause in midlife often become more insulin resistant, meaning it takes more and more insulin to get that food into storage where it needs to go. And the more insulin surging through your body, the more your body is storing fat. Your body cannot store fat and burn fat at the same time. This is another fantastic persuasive argument for strength training. Strength training, even more than cardiovascular exercise, although low levels of uh, walking regularly, being moving, not so much exercise and going for a long walk, listening to a podcast, chatting with a friend, but not doing it for the sake of calorie burning or getting breathless. Those kinds of things also can help stabilize blood sugar, but none as well as strength training well. So if you want to decrease the storage of belly fat where cortisol and insulin team up. So think about it. When your cortisol is out of balance, you probably tend to crave more. Usually we don't crave kale and salmon. We crave, you know, bread or we need wine. We justify that. And everything spikes your blood sugar a little bit more, which means your body will bring in insulin and potentially it's having to bring in more and more to get that sugar out of your body, protecting you and into the cells for storage, for energy, for exercise later, for instance. But if you have to take more and more insulin, that is combined with cortisol that redistributes fat cells to the belly. It redistributes or creates fat cells that weren't even there. The two of them together will do that. So if you're feeling not just that you can't lose weight, but specifically that weight has relocated to your waist and you never had a problem with that, much of that is related to testosterone and estrogen and growth hormone. But the biggest one is decrease your stress level, sister. Do everything you can to not overexercise, to make sure you're eating sufficient calories and not putting your body on a diet. That's stress. You're hydrating because if you're dehydrated, that's stress. And that's plus all the emotional things. You need to deal with it. Stressors can't go away, but the opposite of stress is pleasure. So find some, find ways to laugh, find things you love to do and offset it. You can't smile, you can't laugh, you can't have sex and have cortisol and be stressed. All right. So there you go. That's a to-do list for this weekend, huh? All right. The bottom line is this. Your body doesn't want to carry extra weight. Habit changes can positively influence hormones. You have the ability to turn it around at any age. Are you going to generate more estrogen 10 years after menopause? No, 
but you will support your cortisol and your insulin levels. You will, if you're in perimenopause or early postmenopause, be able to improve your own hormone balance and boost naturally so that if you choose to do hormone replacement therapy, you need less of it. So I share frequently tricks that I use. You'll find some at flipping50.com forward slash resources, things that I use and nothing on that page is something that I just slapped up there that, oh, this is for menopausal women. I don't share anything with you that I don't use, haven't at least use for a period of time and love it or use it right now. So you'll find several things that I've done to change my lifestyle habits, trying to try really hard to kick coffee to the curb. I'll still have a cup occasionally, but switching to mashed up, for instance, in the brand I choose because it's quadruple screened for no mold, pesticides, toxins, and that's important for anything you do regularly. So all the goodies and the references that I've used today, where you can find them if you're a science girl and you're like, prove it to me, <laughs> I got you. Those references are here and the resources that I mentioned from the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. So health coaches, personal trainers, I know you're out there. And I know maybe some of you actually would love to be one, but love to be more profitable and be surviving after maybe having a start over on your own after the pandemic. I'm here to help you. Personal trainers and health coaches who really want to grow their business in 2021, I'll put the link to the mastermind, the food flip. So currently you've got to hurry. We close in the last week of April. We're almost in the that. So take a good look. And the five day flip for a really short reset. And I wanted to say recess, and I guess it kind of is. <laughs> it's free. You've got nothing to lose and you've got energy to gain. And if what you're doing now isn't working, you know, if you, this doesn't work, you can always go back, but I think you'll learn something. So as I'm queuing, I'm also supporting you with information about why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. And I hope you like it. I hope that was helpful. It was definitely a long podcast, but this message oh so important. And as I'm getting a lot of women, you know, spring training, summer's coming. We all kind of start that. Wait a minute. The summer clothes are coming out a year and a little more ago. It was pre pandemic and now it's not. So here's help dive in and do the right thing. Don't do more of what's not working. You'll find today's show notes at flipping50.com forward slash not losing weight. And if you've got questions, you can put them below the show notes. And I look forward to hearing from you. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together. <laughs>